let's talk about elemental particles. So we're really asking the question, what's the most fundamental thing in the universe? And after a short think, most of us would probably say, well, the most fundamental thing would be atoms, because atoms are the building block of the universe. But they're not truly elemental. That means atoms can be broken down further. Atoms have parts. Atoms have electrons, protons, and neutrons in them. Now the question becomes, well, are the electrons, protons, and neutrons, are they what truly cannot be broken down any further? And up until about the 1930s, Electrons, protons, neutrons, and photons were considered to be the most elemental particles. But what they really are is the observed particles. These are the particles that are most easily observed. And it turns out there's all kinds of other particles. In fact, here's a short list of some of those other particles. So there is a whole lot of particles. And how did we come to know that? All of these other particles began to be discovered when the bubble chamber was invented. And the bubble chamber simply consists of it's a superheated liquid. Generally, that liquid is going to be hydrogen. And when it's superheated, that means it's above the boiling temperature, but it's not boiling. And the slightest perturbation, such as a particle moving through it, will create a stream of bubbles. It effectively causes boiling on the line of its path. And all kinds of things can be discovered about a particle if its path is traced. Because if we have a magnetic field, then the positive particles will circle one way, and the negatively charged particles will circle the other way. If the particle is quite massive, it'll have a large radius of curvature. If it's quite small mass, it'll have a small radius of curvature. The paths would sometimes form a fork in the road, indicating that some sort of decay took place. In some places, the bubbles would be very thick, indicating a lot of slowing down was occurring. So all kinds of information could be obtained from these bubble chambers. And then scientists began to collide high energy particles into one another, and that produced all kinds of new particles. Now humankind's curiosity and drive to find out more about these elementary particles has led to the building of bigger and bigger particle accelerators. And the largest of those particle accelerators is the Large Hadron Collider. It's perhaps man's greatest technological achievement. You can read more about it. I find his design to be truly awe-inspiring. It's located on the French-Swiss border. Uh, its circumference is 27 kilometers around. And most recently, it was used to verify the existence of a predicted particle called the Higgs particle. And we'll talk more about that in a future video. So you might be asking yourself, why, if there's so many different types of particles, is all of matter made of neutrons, protons, and electrons? Why is nothing made out of these other particles? And the answer is very simple. These other particles are unstable. That means they have very short lifetimes. The lifetime of a Higgs particle is predicted to be about 1.6 times 10 to the minus 22 seconds. So if we're going to build things out of matter, it's got to be built out of things that are stable. So the observed particles are stable particles. The other particles, not so much. Now, when scientists started to see all these different types of particles, of course, they began to look for patterns. And of course, any patterns would have to come from more elemental particles that are making up the particles that we're seeing. And the overall pattern that we see is something like this. You've got all of matter. All of matter can be broken down into two types of particles, leptons, which are truly elemental. That means they have no internal structure. And your classic example of a lepton would be an electron. Now, the other major class of particles was called the hadrons. And there's two types of hadrons. There's baryons and there's mesons. A classic example of a baryon would be a neutron or a proton. In terms of classical examples of mesons, well, there aren't any everyday particles of matter that are mesons. But perhaps the two that you're most likely to encounter in word problems, etc., would be pions and kions. Now, as it turns out, these baryons and mesons are not truly fundamental, because they're made of something simpler. A baryon is made of three quarks. Whereas mesons are made of a quark plus an antiquark. And it's these quarks that are truly elemental. 
they have no internal structure. So what in the universe is truly elemental? Well, quarks are truly elemental, leptons are truly elemental, and then we'll need to talk about what are called the exchange particles. Exchange particles are a little bit different. They're responsible for the fundamental forces of nature. They're responsible for the strong nuclear force. The weak force, the electromagnetic force, such as in electrostatic repulsion, and the force of gravity. The exchange particles are sometimes called the gauge bosons. So the truly elemental stuff, these exchange particles, leptons, and quarks. And that's it. Now you're likely to encounter a chart like the one below. It's a chart of the standard model. And the standard model is simply a model of the most elemental particles. So as we've discussed, the most elemental particles are the quarks, the leptons, and the gauge bosons. Now there's not just one type of quark. It turns out there's six types of quark, but each of those types can come in three different colors. And then all of those 18 types of quark have an anti-quark. So you really have in total 36 different types of quark. The leptons come in six different varieties and each one of those has an antiparticle. So you've really got 12 different types of leptons. And then the gauge bosons are the exchange particles. Well we've got exchange particles for each one of the fundamental forces. It's the gluon that's responsible for the strong force. It turns out the gluons can come in different colors. They're not really colors, but it turns out the way that colors combine to make new colors is kind of similar to the way that quarks and gluons combine. The exchange particle responsible for the electromagnetic force is simply the photon. For the weak force, which is responsible for radioactive decay, there's three different types of boson. There's the W plus and W minus bosons, and the Z boson these are also called the intermediate vector bosons. Now it's never been discovered, but there's also thought to be a graviton which is responsible for the gravitational force. And then all the hubbub recently has been about the Higgs particle or Higgs boson. And it's thought to be responsible for giving all the other particles their mass. So we have a lot more to talk about, but this chart I think really helps to organize these elemental particles in our universe. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.